here, I'm Melissa Batt, the host of Priorities on Purpose, a podcast for overwhelmed direct sellers who want to grow their income, audience, and influence without sacrificing their mental health and main priorities. Whether you're just starting a new adventure or you're 15 years in and have already climbed the ranks, I want to help you have the life and the business of your dreams. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Or maybe you thought you had it and something changed. Whether you have your entire dream mapped out or have completely given up on all the possibilities, I'm here to remind you that God is bigger than the little box we put him in. This side gig is part of his plan. It's not your sole purpose, but it absolutely has purpose. As a Christian life and business coach, I'm here to help you get out of your head and live with intention so you can enjoy what matters most without the guilt. More time to do what you love, more peace, more impact, more money, and opportunities to give to those you wanna help. I promise to be your hype girl, business bestie, and biggest cheerleader as I share proven and simple strategies that will be sure to help you live a fulfilled life with a strong, sustainable business. Are you ready to stop chasing all the shiny things and get laser focused? Put your earbuds in while you're cooking dinner or folding that laundry and let's get to it, friend. This is one time when multitasking is actually going to be beneficial. Hey, hey, friends, welcome to another episode of Priorities on Purpose. I'm your host, Melissa Batt. And today I'm going to be sharing with you a little behind the scenes, actually some laser coaching I did live inside of our Real Talk Tribe community. And it was so good. So Karen is part of the Breakthrough Challenge this round. And we're in week two when this was recorded. And basically what is going on is she knows where she wants to go, but we're really trying to figure out like where she's at and how much she can do in 12 weeks. So many times we we bite off more than we can chew and then we self-sabotage. And so we're actually walking it back a little bit and really talking about what can we do now to prepare for this thing that she knows she's going to do. She's going to be launching a group membership to really focus and help people with their health and wellness. But she's not quite there yet for this 12 weeks. So we're going to be talking about what she can do now. She knows she needs to build multiple streams of income because she doesn't ever want to be put in a position where she loses her job and has no income coming in. And so with that in mind, I want you to go on and take a listen to this laser coaching session because it's really, really good. Grab pen and paper because you're going to need it, especially if you have this big goal of impacting the world through some kind of coaching, whether it's wellness and health or something totally different. It doesn't matter. This is going to be really, really good. You're going to want to take notes. Or love never fails or fades. I'll build a boat, so let it rain. Okay, I just have to tell you this because that's where I think a lot of us are. We're on the cusp of something that God is telling us to do, and it's scary, and sometimes it doesn't make sense. I remember in 2004, God gave me a vision, and it made zero sense, absolutely no sense. It was me on the stage, and I was talking to women, and It was like I could see them surrendering and the chains falling as they become free. And in this vision, it made no sense. Like me on a stage, me talking to people like this, like I'm an introvert. I thought it wasn't me, right? And now here I am and I'm like, oh my gosh. But I knew like then it wasn't the time. In fact, I didn't even tell that story or start sharing it until the last two years because I knew that it was coming, but it wasn't time. Some of you guys have been holding on to this for a really long time, and now it is time. It's time for you to start taking those action steps and walking it out. And so all that to say, let's bring on Karen, shall we? Let's go, girl. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you. Can you feel the energy? I do. (laughs) Okay. I can't make it up. When I have it, I have it. And when I don't, it's obvious. So Karen, tell us a little bit about where you're at, what's your goal that you're working on that you want to talk about today? Where I'm at right now is I want freedom to make my own decisions and the flexibility to make my own decisions. That's probably the biggest cloud in the sky. That's where it is. Last week when I was on your session, 
You put out the goal for me to have a group coaching program launch at the end of this, which would be in January. And every part of my being when you said it was like, yes, that's exactly it. I've talked about that. I've thought about that. I've wanted that for so long. But fear and doubt and failure just creep right in. And I very easily can say there is no way I can do this in 12 weeks. There's absolutely no way I can create this and get this launched in 12 weeks. And then I become overwhelmed and then I just shut down. That is where I'm at. I had, I told you in my Instagram message to you that I had a really massive God time this morning and I feel it. There is something sitting there on the cusp of what I'm supposed to be doing. And I just, I need some help to make sure that I can get past that and don't let the fear and frustration and overwhelming drive what I want. Okay. So the first thing I hear you say is I can't do it. And God's not asking you to do it alone. He wants to partner with you. And so I'm not saying because you have to discern for yourself if this is the time or if this isn't the time. If it's not the time, I feel like that is your heart's desire to go there at some point. Correct. So if it's not time for that, then we have to look at, okay, well, what is it time for? And I can't discern that for you. I can't tell you if it's fear or not. That's where you have to be plugged into God. You got to have that quiet time and be like, okay. And one of the books that I read earlier this year, gosh, I can't remember. Oh, If you want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. Great book. And I listened to it on the Audible version. I think I listened to it on Scribed, but so good because the author doesn't read it, but the narrator is so good. And it's like, if you want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. And so at some point, you have to be willing to get out of the boat to do this work. But it doesn't mean that Like, so if launching isn't like you're not ready to launch, maybe it is walking out things to be able to launch the next 12 weeks. You know, like you don't sell when Tammy created and decided to do a devotional. It wasn't a launch and sell and write all at the same time. It builds on each other. And so if that's the case for you, I totally get that. So then we have to look at like, what's the low hanging fruit? that you can work on. Number one, building an audience, sharing your authority. You have to start showing up in a way so that people know you, like you, trust you, and recognize that they need you. Because yeah, sometimes God will hit someone over the head with a brick. I always use that. I'm like, send me bricks, Lord, send me bricks. But yes, he'll knock someone over the head with a brick and be like, you need to work with her. But Also, sometimes we're not obedient in that because we're like, that girl ain't even showing up. She ain't even doing anything. Why would I need to even message her? You know, which for the record, anytime you feel that tug to reach out to somebody and you don't know why. And this was definitely one of my baby steps as I went through this process. I just felt like God said, you just got to say yes. Like when you feel it, obedience is a must. I reached out to random people that, you know, God would put someone on my heart and I didn't even understand what it's for. To this day, there are some people that I connected with that I'm like, I don't know why I was supposed to reach out to that person, but I did it. And I know that I did it out of obedience. And so God is going to use it and there is purpose in it, even if I don't know what it is yet. And so know that it doesn't have to make sense. You just have to do the thing. And that goes for everything, not just in who God calls you to reach out to, you know, but that's where I felt the most nudge. God would put someone on my heart and I would reach out to them and be like, this doesn't make sense. I haven't talked to you in five years, but is there any way we can have a phone call? Because I just really feel like we're supposed to talk. Don't be afraid to do Mm -hmm. that because God will use it. And there is like there is reason for it. The biggest struggle with that is we have to slow down enough to hear God and Mm -hmm. recognize that it's God. It's not that God's not talking to us. It's not that he's not trying to help us. The problem is we dismiss it because we're either one, we're like, oh, that doesn't make sense. We have to be in expectation. 
Mm-hmm. And that's what I loved about reading about Jericho and all of that. Again, it's just that reminder to be expectant, like be listening for him to help you because he does want to help you. And if this is something that he is calling you to do, you don't have to do it on your own. He's going to like you're partnering with him. I almost and probably in 2020 still, I almost paid thousands and thousands of dollars to be a part of a program that I thought was what I needed to do to go to where I wanted to go. And this may seem contradicting because yes, do I want you to work with me? Absolutely. But so many times we're looking for that quick fix, that magic formula. And I was looking for that too. And so I was looking at, like, I wanted to be able to like get the cliff notes basically you know, to get through it faster. And I mean, I had my husband convinced and I mean, I was ready to shell out money I did not have for this program. So first of all, be in alignment with that person because I felt like that would help me like the prestige or whatever of that person. And then get like if they're working with million dollar people, like I wanted to be in the same room with them, like all of that stuff. And it came down to one day, what I heard was like, so you feel like if you plug into this person, you can raise your rates, you can show up confidently. Why can't you do that with me? You need to be plugged into me. And so many times we look for a coach to do those things. And that's not our role as a coach. Our roles as a coach is to partner with you and help you. And that is so hard because I wanted that quick fix, but I needed to depend on God. And also when we want it, we want it now. And there's a blog post that I think I've done and there'll be a podcast episode also. But I talk about how like, if God was to give it all to you right now, would it be sustainable? Would you be able to handle it? No. Like there's still work that needs to be done. And so there is a reason why the dam is still there holding back the water. And so I think it's really important to recognize that and make sure that you're doing what you can do right now where you're at, being where your feet are to walk out what you know to do. So with that being said, what are some of those things that you can think of that will be helpful for you? So I think what's really important is it would have been... Last spring, I really intentionally got on my stories on Instagram and just shared where I was at or thoughts that I was having. So if I had done my workout and been hit by consistency or accountability or, hey, just share this message, right? I would get on and I would just share it because I didn't have another outlet. I didn't know how else to do it. And I was getting a lot of messages, right? Like, oh, thank you so much. This is exactly what I needed to hear. I'm so glad you said this. And that right now is something I can do. I know it is. I just got very in my own head because of personal things that were going on, like losing my job unexpectedly and feeling like a failure that I quit, right? And that's when I should have really dug into that. But I know God was like, it's okay. I know that you need to rest right now. You're resting in me. But now I'm at a point where I'm like, okay, I feel like I can be open about this. I feel like I can talk more about it to create connections with people and just let them see what I'm doing, right? I'm an inconsistent person. One day I do everything right and the next day I don't. Like buying five pounds of red chili powder. Did you see my Instagram stuff? I did. And I was like, noted. Not all chili powder is equal. Yes. And I was like, this is the stuff, right? Like, this is the stuff that I can do right now that is funny, lighthearted, and creates that connection with people so that I'm growing my audience and I'm finding out what they need. Because that's the other thing is I feel stuck in, I'm not exactly sure what I should say that's going to help them. So if I'm doing stuff like that right now, just to get out there and just share that, I bought five pounds of red chili powder and it's completely useless to me at this point. Like that's super funny to people. And now I can talk about it and move on and and that sort of thing. So 
that is definitely one of the goals I need to have on a weekly is even if I say three days a week, I am going to just get on my stories and be real about something, right? Like I'm going to pick something from that day and be super real about it and share and and that sort of thing. I think that that would help because I do need to grow my audience. I need, when I'm ready, I have people that I can go to and say, hey, this is what I want to do. Do you want to partner with me on it? So the one thing I hear you say is growing your audience. And when God says speak, speak, use your words, use your mouth, use your voice. But to grow your audience, stories isn't necessarily the best way to grow your audience. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to connect with your current audience. Okay. And so a Facebook Live, Instagram Live, whichever platform is your choice, would be the best way to go to get in front of new people. Because the more, you know, telling them like and share, this is what's going on today and just showing up that consistency, that's going to go way further than stories because stories is just going to connect with the people that are already following you. Okay. Interesting. I've never, I mean, I've done Facebook lives inside of private groups, but I've never done it Uh for the world. (laughs) Start showing up now as if you were already there where you're wanting to go because your posture is going to be different. Your positioning, it's that expectation. It's not faking it till you make it. It Mm -hmm. is believing you're already there. People just don't know it yet. Mm -hmm. That really is what it is, correct? I guess so. I I think so. (laughs) It is. Like you're there. Yes. Like we all are continuously growing. So it's not that you're like you've arrived, but you are where you need to be to help them. They just don't know it yet. And so showing up with that authority is really going to make a huge difference in doing it live. Do you have a business page yet? On Facebook? Yeah. No. Okay. What I would recommend you do is is your Instagram page public. Yes. So I would create a business page okay. so that your business page can be linked to your Instagram page. I'm not saying don't do stories. I'm just saying like lives are going to make a big difference and it's content you can repurpose later and make reels out of or whatever. Although I think that's a pain in the butt and it's not the best use of your time. But doing the lives is better than nothing. And it's, you know, telling them like, comment, share, that kind of thing. And I am like, listen, I am terrible at telling people to like, comment and share. Like I'm like getting on and I'm like, here we go. This is what we're talking about. But I forget like the goal is to grow the audience also, not just to serve the current audience. And you can do both. And so just make that mental note to tell people like, comment, share and give them a shout out. And, you know, doing that, even if you do it once a week, that's where I started. Like once a week, I like I made I did it the same day every single week because I knew I was inconsistent, but I needed to set those parameters to help me move forward. And so I'm like, okay, I don't care what I'm doing this day is, you know, like I would do. I did like wisdom with Melissa for a while. I did talk Tuesdays or or whatever. Mondays with Melissa, like you pick. I mean, your name's Karen, so you can't necessarily do like, I can't think of a word that would go with a K. Kick it with Karen. There you go. And you just talk about whatever. You know, (laughs) I also made a goal that I would not go live unless I'd been in the word because I wanted to make sure the message I was sharing was not from me, but it was from God. Yep. And sometimes they are not always in alignment because I'm human. And so I set that goal for myself that I would make sure, especially if it was because some t- one of the things that God has really called me to speak out on is like controversial topics. And so in those, I had to make sure like I wasn't just ranting, you know, I wanted to make sure it really was like something God wanted me to talk about. And so like setting some of those guardrails and being like, okay, I'm just going to do this. That's a great goal, Mm -hmm. but that's not an income goal. And what I heard you say is you needed income. Is that still something that you're like, Mm -hmm. I need, yeah, I still need income. I do need income, but more so I need the income because I eventually would like to replace, right, what I've got. And so in my mind, I'm thinking, God willing, because this year has been just a 
loop of jobs and throwing stuff at me. God willing, I stay in this position because I, I do enjoy helping and being with the company that I'm with as an independent contractor. So, you know, still working that way, I'm okay with, but I want to build on the side, like multiple streams of incomes where it's multiple streams of income. That is like, that's all I've been hearing lately. And that is exactly what I know I need because I do not ever want to be in a place where I'm blindsided and become mm-hmm. financially like out of control again. I don't want it. Yeah. Well, so that would be where I would start building your audience and showing up. Hey friend, that's it for this episode. If you found value, I would love it if you could take a couple of seconds and leave me a quick review. While it may seem super simple, it is so beneficial and gives me the opportunity to help more women. Also take a screenshot and share it on social media with your biggest aha today. Don't forget to tag me at Melissa Bad Official so we can connect. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, friend, keep walking it out one baby step at a time because God's got you.